So it's been a few days since I was sent this device here, the rather strangely named Pow Kitty RGP 20S. These companies have got to start consulting people <laughs> with the names of their products. And I would love to tell you that since receiving it, that it's been great, that it's been my Ambernic device. You've seen me cover the, what is it, the RG, RG35XX. Again, these names, that's not quite as bad as Pow Kitty, but still very hard to remember. I wish I could tell you that it's been just like that, but with two analog sticks and N64 games and DS games and even better than that. But unfortunately, that is not what I can tell you. This is not my review because my review really is going to have to start after today, assuming that this all goes well, because since getting this thing, it's been nothing but problem after problem, two total problems. So issue number one, when I first booted this thing up, it was totally in Chinese and I do not speak Chinese. I barely speak English. So I had to go and find a YouTube video from, uh, fortunately, Pow Kitty had their own video about this showing how to change the language. Now, obviously, if I could read Chinese, I could find the language setting quite easily, but otherwise, I don't know what I'm doing. So I had to count like, okay, it's like seven down and then go into that and then change it. I got it changed to English, but what was weird from there is that it wasn't completely in English. A lot of the menus, a lot of the text was still in Chinese. It was like a weird mishmash. It was like 50-50 English and Chinese. But I could still like mostly navigate the thing. So no really big deal there, I guess. Kind of annoying, doesn't really look the best, but like, I, I guess this is how this thing works. So I'm using it and I decided I'm gonna try to put an additional ROM onto the device. So the way you do this is you're going to pop out the SD card on the side, there are two. One is the system and one is for your ROMs. The blue one on this side is for your ROM. So I popped it out, put it into an SD card reader and I moved a couple of games over. And then when I put the thing back in to try to boot it up, well, that's where problem number two arose because now the thing is effectively bricked. Rather than booting into the actual system, it just kind of shows a black screen with a little cursor blinking up in the top left hand corner. It appears as though once again, these devices are being shipped with very cheap, unreliable SD cards and it has become corrupted. So we're off to what could only be described as a tremendous start with the PAL Kitty RGB 20S. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to save this thing. And presumably, if this happened to me so quickly, it's happened to other people as well. So hopefully this video will be a bit of an aid to those people. I have read online that it is relatively easy to flash an SD card with the operating system again and to continue on. So what I've done is I've gone on Amazon and I've purchased two 64 gigabyte micro SD cards for relatively inexpensive prices. I think it was like less than $15. And we're just gonna replace both of those cards and we're going to try again. Now, unlike with my Ambernic device, I was unable to easily find the official firmware for this handheld. I've Googled Pow Kitty RGB 20S firmware. I've gone to Pow Kitty's official website. Maybe I'm just missing it or they've got it hidden somewhere, but I don't see any option to download anything like a firmware. I see an option for parts. I don't think that they're qualifying a firmware as a part. So this is already sort of a bit frustrating. Now I will say that I was actually sent a Google Drive link from the rep who actually reached out to send me this thing that's supposed to be that firmware. But because I don't see that available to anyone else, I don't see where they've, and this has been posted anywhere else. Maybe I'm wrong, but like, I'm not going to ChinaGadgetsReview.com to download a firmware, right? Like, so I'm going to have to do something else. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the lead of another YouTuber, Retro Game Core, because they have, I think, what I'm hoping is going to be the right answer here. Because if you go to their video review of this device, something really interesting about this device. At one point, I decided to take out the second SD card and change out some of those games. But as soon as I added the game card back to the device, it stopped booting. It would show me a loading screen and then it would just flash like this indefinitely. And I tried all sorts of things. They had the exact same thing happen to them. So they seem to get it working. So I'm just gonna show what they did, but I'm gonna actually give you like a tutorial about what they did, I believe. And unfortunately what they had to do was they actually installed a custom firmware for a different device. Instead of, because there isn't anything for their RGB 20S, but there is, 
a custom firmware that will work for another device. Apparently, RG351MP firmware works just fine. So we're going to go download that, and I'm going to show you how to install it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a new SD card, preferably something larger than the 16 gig card that it came with, because there's a chance you're going to be running everything, games included, off of that one card. The second thing you're going to want to do is take out the SD card that contains your games and we're gonna make a backup of that card. So you're just gonna plug it into a card reader and literally just copy and paste all your ROMs they've included, take them off of that, put it on your computer, we're gonna move it over to the new card in a minute. The next thing we need to do is we need to go and download something called Rufus, which allows you to create a bootable USB drive. It's basically how we're gonna flash this operating system onto the new SD card. So scroll down and just pick one, portable or non-portable, doesn't matter. Just go ahead and give that a download. After that, go ahead and click on the second link in the description, which will take you to this page where we are going to download Arc OS. Apparently, Arc OS is what this thing was already running, but it was like a slightly tweaked version of it. So we're going to scroll down. I believe this is at the very bottom. And we are looking for the one that says RG351MP. And we're going to pick whichever version you want to click on. G Drive is probably going to be just fine let's click on that and let's click on download and download anyways is it's an image but it is compressed so we're gonna let that download let all the roms copy from the sd card to your computer which might take forever and then we'll pick up from there you may find that the act of actually copying those roms off of that little blue card they sent with this thing is so slow that it might actually be faster to source your roms elsewhere if you know what i mean and then copy them over to the new card once we're done setting it up so at this point you should have gone ahead and downloaded all the roms that you need or copied them into that folder whichever way you end up going you should have rufus there to copy the stuff over and then your actual operating system there in that file so you're probably gonna need something like winrar or 7-zip to extract this i'll drop links to both in the description but i'm gonna use winrar let's go ahead and just extract to its own nice little folder while that's still extracting, we'll go ahead and go to the next step. Let's double click on Rufus. And this is what you should be looking at here. For device, make sure this is the new micro SD card. It probably is unless you have other uh, flash drives or so forth plugged in. For this section here, we're going to select the disk image or ISO. So that's just about to finish. We are good. Let's click on select. And that's the new folder we just extracted to. And there you will see ArcOS. So we're going to double click on that. You don't need to change anything else. Just go ahead and click on start and let this thing. Yes, it's going to erase everything on the card. So be aware of that. Now we're just going to let it do its magic and put this operating system on that card. So let's see what happens now. If we take this SD card out, let's put it into our console and try and turn it on and see if we have actually done anything good at all. So like I mentioned, that's the one for games. You know this because it says game and this one is for the operating system and it says operating system. So let's get rid of that piece of garbage and let's put the new card in and let's see uh, what we've got here. Well, we have a splash screen, so that's a, a particularly good sign. That tells me there's an operating system on this device. Easy ROMs partition expansion conversion to XFAT in process. The device will now reboot to something to continue, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's doing some sort of conversion from one file system to another. So we're just going to let it do its thing and see how long this takes. It's hard to see, but that light is still very faintly on. So I do believe something is happening. So mine was sitting for a good 15 minutes. So I got brave and clicked on the restart button. And now this is happening. So I think that the actual conversion is taking place. For some reason, it wasn't taking place before. So I don't know, maybe you can wait it out. Maybe you wait a few minutes and hit reset like I did. I, I can't really tell you what's the right way to go there, but that did seem to work for me. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop looking at that horrible flashing mess and we'll pick up here in a minute. Quickly, quickly, a completed expansion of Easy ROMs partition and conversion to XFAT. The system will now reboot and load Arc OS. Okay, I almost missed seeing that there. I almost missed getting that on film, but we managed to catch it. We should be rebooting and hopefully We'll be looking at an operating system here in just a moment. I'm beginning to wonder if we're in a similar state where it's not actually rebooting. Let's click on the little restart button here. And yeah, okay, so for some reason, mine just does not want to actually reboot. When it thinks it's rebooting, 
It is not. It is. It's a lie. All right. So at this point, we need to address the ROM situation. We need to take the ROMs that you either copied off of this card or that you obtained somewhere, and we need to copy them onto the SD card that we just put the operating system onto, or you could just continue running off of this card and hope that nothing bad happens. But what I will say is that my initial plan of having a second large card in here with the ROMs on it appears to be very, very difficult to pull off. For some reason, this thing is just not seeing this uh, other 64 gig card that I got no matter what I do. So I'm going to just instruct you at this point, and get this thing out of here, my goodness. I'm going to instruct you to simply run everything off of this card or to continue using this thing, preferably run everything off of this card. So let's jump into putting the ROMs onto this card now. So at this point, I've taken the SD card that we have flashed our operating system, Arc OS 2, and I've plugged it back into my computer. Ignore these three drives. These are the ones that are actually associated with my PC. All we can see though is the boot partition. Okay, so that's not the one that we need. There should be another partition for us to drag our ROMs into. If you go into this, you can see, I think this is where are my ROMs. It's a little readme bit of text that says this can happen and the way that you're supposedly able to fix this is to go into the partition manager, which you should see here. There is our SD card, and you're supposed to be able to right click on this and do change drive letter or paths, but it's not letting me do this. So we're gonna have to try another method and hopefully this works. We're gonna type in run, and then we're gonna use disk part. We're then gonna type in list disk, so based on the disk management app here, you should be able to figure out which disk is your SD card. So we're gonna do select disk three, and then we're gonna do list partition. And we know that this one here, partition three, is the culprit. So we're gonna do select partition three, and let's type in detailed partition. You'll see here that it is in fact hidden. So we're gonna try and fix that by typing set ID equals 07. We are now visible and uh, I should be able to go back and there is my easy ROMs folder. Okay, we are <laughs> making progress. So we should now be able to drag our ROMs back over into the, their appropriate folders from here. All right, so after what felt like an eternity, we have copied all of our ROMs over to the system SD card. And I wanna make sure that everything is functioning there correctly. And it looks like, yes, we are all good. All of the ROMs I copied over are there. So if you do want to use that other SD card, though, if you want to use the old one, or maybe you figured out how to make it recognize it, because I just could not, you can go to Options and then Advanced, and then go to Switch to SD2 for ROMs, and that should switch it over to that and let you use that second card. For me, I am more than happy to just run everything off one card at this point. Real quickly, everything's in English, so that's really cool because it wasn't before. Like these sorts of menus are all in, uh, all in Chinese. So I'm pretty happy that I can read all this. So let's jump to, uh, let's jump to Pokemon, and everything is running great. Fantastic, we're off and rolling, guys. Now I believe that some of the controls are a bit different. So, so I didn't get enough time with the stock operating system to know the hotkeys, but I know on this one. Uh, hitting select and start at the same time is how you actually will close out of the game. And I believe that select is your hotkey, even though FN should be, I believe it is still select. So like select and R1. Yes, that did save a save state. You can see your N64 emulator still having some weirdness going on there. So it's not going to be totally perfect in terms of the appearance. Maybe there's a way to... Uh, make some of that stuff better. Maybe that'll be a topic for another video. Looks like select and X brings up the retro arch menu, which is just like it is on my Ambernick device. So that's pretty cool. At least got some familiarity. There's definitely some texture popping happening there because I didn't mention it. Select and L1 will then load that save, uh, that save state. Although you can just use the retro arch menu and kind of edit all that stuff manually or go through that, you know, save and so forth manually. So yeah, like I said, definitely seen some pretty heavy uh, texture popping in and out there. Let's see if I can get into a level and see if it's doing the same thing there. Look at that, that window over there popping in and out of existence. The shadows are definitely a bit funky too, but it is running really, really smoothly. I'll give it that. Mario's head appears to be just lit up like the sun, like a Christmas tree. 
A little bit of slowdown there I might have detected. This appears to look generally okay though, right? Let's get a little closer here. Does this look okay to you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. There's still some weird things with some shadows and stuff, but this is this is very, very playable. Very, very playable, guys. I would consider this a success. We are officially unbricked. We are functional again, and my review can now begin in earnest. I really hope that this was useful to somebody out there who had had something similar to this happen, and this has allowed you to, to recover your device and have more confidence with it. Hopefully, this is a permanent fix. Guys, stay tuned for more content like this and a review of this device coming very, very soon. Subscribe so that you don't miss it. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, guys.